Pythagoras' theorem applies to the sides A, B and C of a right angled triangle. It tells us that C squared equals A squared plus B squared, where C is the hypotenuse. There are many different ways to prove this. In this video we will look at a simple and elegant proof by Einstein. There are two ideas which we will look at first before giving the final proof. Since the theorem is based on the squares of the lengths of each side, it is common to show this by drawing an actual square on each side. The square A has an area equal to the length of side A squared. Square B has area equal to the length of side B squared. Square C has area equal to the length of side C squared. This means that we can write Pythagoras' theorem in two different ways. In terms of the lengths, it is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. In terms of the areas of the squares, it is simply c equals a plus b. This means that if we can prove that area c is equal to area a plus area b, we have proved the theorem. There are many different proofs that take this approach. They use geometry or algebra to prove the relationship between the areas, and this proves the theorem. The first step in Einstein's proof is to notice that we don't have to use squares to prove the theorem. For example, in this case we have drawn a semicircle on each side of the original triangle. The area of a semicircle is half pi r squared, where r is the radius. For semicircle A, the diameter is the length of side A, so the radius is A over 2. The area is pi over 8 times A squared. For semicircle B, the area is pi over 8 times B squared. For semicircle C, it is pi over 8 times C squared. The area equation C equals A plus B gives us an equation for the relationship between the lengths of the sides. It is pi over 8 times C squared equals pi over 8 times A squared plus B squared. This is just the Pythagoras equation with both sides multiplied by pi over 8. So if we can find a way to show that the area of semicircle C is equal to the sum of the areas of A and B, we will have proved the theorem. Now there probably isn't some simple way of proving this with semicircles, but that isn't the point. This is an illustration of a more general case. More generally, we can prove Pythagoras like this. We construct three similar shapes on each edge of the triangle. Remember that two shapes are similar if they have exactly the same shape, but might not be the same size. The three similar shapes must have linear dimensions that are in proportion to the triangle sides A, B and C. We then prove that area C is equal to area A plus area B. This proves Pythagoras' theorem. The second thing we need to know for Einstein's proof is this. If we draw a perpendicular line from the hypotenuse to the opposite vertex, it creates three similar triangles. Here is the original triangle. The angles are x and y. We draw a perpendicular line from the hypotenuse C to the opposite vertex. This creates two triangles. These triangles and the original are all similar. Two triangles are similar if they have two angles the same. The blue triangle on the bottom left has the same angle x as the original triangle, and they are both right angle triangles. This means they have two angles the same, so they are similar. The green triangle on the bottom right has the same angle y as the original triangle, and again they are both right angle triangles, so they are also similar. So we have three similar triangles. It is also worth noticing that the triangles have hypotenuses of length A, B and C. So now we can use these results to show Einstein's proof of Pythagoras. Here is a right angle triangle with a triangle drawn on each edge. 
Each of the triangles A, B and C is similar to the original triangle. They have hypotenuses of length A, B and C. We can prove Pythagoras' theorem simply by proving that the areas A and B add up to area C. We have already shown that triangles A and B can be formed by cutting the main triangle into two parts. Triangle C is similar to the original triangle, but it also has the same hypotenuse, so it is congruent. This means that it has the same area, so A plus B equals C, which proves the theorem. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe or visit graphicmaths.com. The link is in the description below.